Scalar 3 is finally out. Yeah, I'm a little bit late to the party, but I'm excited to go through this. There's a lot of really great updates to this, and I'm hoping that you can come away from this video with at least one practical use case for yourself. So let's jump right into it. So outside of new features, I would say that the biggest part of this update is basically an improved UI and a much easier to use workflow. I mean, I don't know if anybody's gonna argue that the Scalar 2 UI was better than this. This is just way easier on the eyes and a lot better flow. So outside of the new features, I think if somebody was to ask me what makes Scalar 3 so much better than Scalar 2, it's gonna be the ease of use and the workflow. It just, it's laid out way more logically. As you can see, it's a lot easier on the eyes than Scalar 2. Essentially, we have browse, which has got your chord sets and scales, create, which is where the fun of exploring happens, and then the arrange page, which is totally new. The two other big upgrades are that you can run this in standalone, and you can also load VSTs, third-party VSTs, right inside of Scalar. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to load in one of my own pianos here. Rousing by manufacturer, I'm just gonna to go to Native Instruments and load Contact 8. I'll spare you some uh, aggravation here, you can't open it by clicking on the plugin name. This is just going to take you back to the menu. So you have to click the little knob here and that's going to open the plugin back up. Okay, so one of the first things that I want to show you is the new profile inside of the keys lock menu. And so what I have is a chord progression loaded up here already. This is the chord progression from uh, Hate It or Love It by The Game featuring 50 Cent. So we have these three chords. the E minor actually repeats. So I'm gonna click option and click and drag that E minor over. So it's cool that you have some common uh, keyboard shortcuts here, including command or control Z if you wanna undo. All right, so now I got that chord progression and the keys lock is down here and you have your typical ones, right? If you wanna lock the scale notes being mapped, scale notes only, scale to the white keys. Now we have chord scale. So what this does, I'm gonna bind it and you see that this lights up. So now those chords are just on the black keys only. To demonstrate why this is unique, I'm gonna just play the four, five, six on my keyboard down here. But what you're gonna notice is that those notes are actually changing based on which chord I'm playing. This is not the keys lock that I would use all of the time, but it's nice to have because it offers a unique way to dynamically change the melodies as you're playing around with it. So I've got this chord progression on the main track here, and let's jump into the create page now, because this is where it starts to get fun. There's so many different launching points for using Scalar to get inspiration, and the case that I'm using here is taking a chord progression from a popular song, and then utilizing the create page, etc., to make it your own and build off of it. One of the big improvements they did was add more categories and tagging. So if we look on the left-hand side of the Explore page here, you can search through genres, you can search through the three different moods, and then you can choose whether you want to have the scale dynamic or not. So I'll explain that in a second. I think I'm going to choose cinematic and just see what we can come up with here. So this is bright, let's make it neutral. And there's our C major. And within this little pentagram, sorry, that's not a pentagram, within this little universe here, uh, we've got, basically what you see is things that are in bright blue, some things that are in faint blue, and some things that are gray. The bright blue ones, they fit into your current scale or current chord progression, mode, whatever you're using. The faint blue ones, second, and then when you're getting to the gray territory, it's, it's getting kind of gray. Which to me, I mean, it sounds like it works, right? It just sounds more, this is, you're going into jazz territory. Since we're in A minor, C major scale, we've got this dynamic scale here, which is, how do I explain this again? Right, yes. So this basically adapts to the last played chord, which you know, if you're getting to real composition, this is what's gonna help you get some really unique 
key changes or just chord progressions overall. But for this video, I'm keeping the dynamic scale off. And what you do from here is you click and drag the chords onto the main track. And then build your chord progression out that way. Let's get back to those four chords though and go over to the colors so that we can make this unique. Within the colors, we've got extensions. So you want your triad, sevenths, etc. Different voicings, different variations, substitutions, and inversions. And if you want to try these out, you have two options. You can just play. Or you can bind and play through them this way. I don't even know what what just happened. Since I added that second E minor, let's uh, let's add something with a different color to it. Let's try voicing number two. See how that sounds. Yeah, yeah. Let's replace that. Yeah, that gives it more like of a circular feel. I like that. Now I've got the chord progression. I'm dragging it up to here. And uh, I'm just going to duplicate this in the first three. And then we're going to test out some of the motions. Inside the motions page, I'm going to go to articulations and passages because this is a new addition to it. And something else cool that they've added is the ability to preview it by clicking and holding. Okay, so interesting tip here, guys. If you click on the title, it's just gonna load it. You have to actually click on the little MIDI area here. I like that. So let's hear how that sounds. I can work with that, but let's try a couple more just to see uh, what other options we have here. Okay, I dig it. Yeah, I think that's the one. And I'm already liking how the chords that I chose, like the little different voicings combined with that passage makes it sound a lot more unique than what we started with. So now let's work inside of the arrange page. I've got the main track and uh, you can see this looks like a da, right? Uh, I have the ability to add the loop on, so I'm gonna do that. And what's cool is even from here, you have the ability to tweak it if you want, right? So if I want to reduce the amount of octaves or lower the octave, I can do that. That doesn't sound good at all. Uh, I can switch up the inversions. You can change the density of the chord. You can also change the voice groupings. So if I wanted to switch it over to a guitar voicing. Now with this chord progression on the main track, I'm gonna jump into the thing that I'm probably gonna be using the most myself. And I'm gonna add another track here. I'm gonna go into the articulations and add an arpeggio track. One of the cool things about this whole arrange page is that it's gonna follow the chords that I have in the main track. So let's load up this, uh... yeah, let's load up this guy and boom, there is an entire track here that's following the chords.
So the fun happens on the side here. If you can look, you see all these different uh, parameters that you can tweak the arpeggio really quickly with. So we have the timing and this is in eight. Then when you utilize the cut tool, you'll notice it's, it's gonna change the pattern. So, so since I've chopped this up into the four sections, I can edit these differently too. So if I wanted to then increase that to 16th notes. Since we're still maintaining the workflow within inside of Scalar here, I'm just gonna add a uh, EQ so we can get rid of some of the low end there. Now the last thing I want to try out here is I'm on the browse page, back on the main page here, and let's see if we can flip the vibe of this thing drastically. I'm scrolling through the moods, and uh, yeah, let's just try something in the eerie. So we've got suspense. All right, let's try Japan. So it loaded up these chords. Actually, it sounds pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. So let me switch, add this to the main track. I'll add this arpeggiator back. So I'm curious to know what you guys think and I really want to know how you utilize Scalar in your workflow. What is the best launching point, starting point for you when you're trying to use it to either sketch out a whole orchestra or just get out of a creative rut, whatever it is. Let's use the comment section here to help each other out because I think most people probably own Scalar 2 and they're thinking about Scalar 3, which for $29 for the upgrade seems like a no-brainer to me.